Lucky, how are you? Oh, Thank good, you. Good, nice good. to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> how are you? We're at the 6th FDM World Congress, and um, I have been at all six. <laughs> Don't do anything. If you take your coffee, you be nice. I think you have to keep it. Uh, it's a chance to get together with the FDM associations. Japan, Europe. We are discussing um, the past, present, and future of the FDM. We talk with other people, get out different ideas about what we're doing. How it affects our lives and other people's lives and, and uh, what we can do to make it go forward. So, welcome to our World Congress. You've traveled from great distances, some of you. The FDM uh, has gone around the world. In the United States, this is what we think the world is. So FDM in the USA uh, started by Steve Tipaldos. Dr. Tipaldos is um, the physician, the American physician, who um, came up with the concept of the fascial distortion model. To start out, we were outliers. When I first met Steve Tipaldos and started doing FDM in my community, I was the only one. Fascial distortion model is a uh, uh, perspective on the body where the soft tissue is responsible for most of the pain we experience. Underneath your skin is this stuff we call fascia. Very important to osteopathic physicians and very important to you because it is your inner skin. It tells you what's going on inside your body like your skin is telling you what's on the outside of your body. So let's talk about ACLs and, and what we know about them. Um, I couldn't pull up information for other countries very easily, but in the United States, we have between 100,000 and 250,000 ACL tears per year. So I'm going to present two case studies. Uh, both of these are female patients. Both were skiing-related, uh, both self-referred to the clinic, and both were likely full tears. I um, took the decision to take a closer look at the verbal complaint for pain, some words that everybody knows, uh, pulling or burning pain along a linear course or pain deep in the joint. And there are many, many more expressions. And uh, for example, weak and stable, always swollen, tensioning, and uh, some even more strange expressions like a hot pen placed on my neck or like a glowing ball inside there or skin peeled off. So the question is, is it less reliable? Should we look at the patient or should we listen to the patient? Or should we do both? Next on our agenda is another person among many in his country who has worked very hard to develop the skills uh, that he has today and that he shares with his colleagues and with his people. FDM in Africa was the one of the highlights in my life. All started in March 2008 when Dr. Perkins visited Burkina Faso for the first time. We did some time in the radiology and we spent some time in the laboratory, but when I got to work with Dr. Diallo, I'm thinking this is what I do, this is my thing. And I was really, really, really reluctant, uh, I, negative, negative feeling about this because the way I'm seeing people crying and the pain, I, I say, oh, this is not uh, good. And I only spent two days with him, but we worked from morning till night, and we saw many cases. When the patient came back looking for him, I was thinking that they want to say, ah, you hurt me. Do you yeah, but then when they, came, they were smiling. And I asked them, what's happened? They say, they are pain-free. Now, the big question, what kind of treatment is suitable for Africa? And the answer is the one who is accessible and efficient, cost-effective, quick, widely available, and not dependent on technology. It's portable, it's efficient, it's cheap, it's low-tech, it can be used anywhere for anybody. The FDM is so successful and so immediate with the results, and you can see it. And for act, the, the patient who must go to work tomorrow or he won't eat, this treatment is much more effective to get them back doing what they need to do. I'm telling you something about the documentation program FDM Data. It collects basic data from the FDM treatments in a simple and effective way. How can we use the flood of information we gain every day in our practice rooms 
and channel it in such a way that we can show and prove how effective the concept is. The goal of this program is to consolidate and to document the experiences of every practicing FDM therapist in such a standardized way that these data can be shared for the benefit of all. I want to discuss fundamental questions about the FDM. Is the partial distortion model an independent medical concept? If so, what are the consequences for doctors, therapists and patients? In our medical concept, facial distortions are the cause of most problems in the human body. After the distortions are corrected, the symptoms disappear. The most medical concepts deprive people of this understanding with complicated and hard to understand issues. The FDM, on the other hand, is understandable and comprehensible. The fascia is our repair system. The adaptability of the body is a biological potential. What I'd like to show is uh, my uh, version of the Anchorage Twist, a uh, technique for folding the intermuscular subseptum of the upper arm. We heard a lot of interesting issues today already, so the topic I'm talking about is maybe a bit more theoretical. And so what is the unique characteristic of the FDM and how can we adapt the right, or how can we find the right research method for this? So diagnosis is based, based on patient's behavior. This is very important. There is a lot of inborn biological behavior in human behavior which was not seen so far just like the gestures of the trigger band, the pain gestures, they were not seen before. They, nobody has ever taken notice of that. Is FDM diagnostic applied etiology? This was the basis of our study. I would like to inform you a little bit what, what happened the last three years in Europe. We also established the FDM International Certificate. And so in 2012, 13 and 14, um, uh, we organized these first um, exams according to the guidelines. Over 44 participants passed the exam. And I think if you can look at this very beautiful um, diploma, they are very proud of this. Yeah? In a lot of offices you can see these diplomas. And I think this is also something very important we have to think about. Yeah? This networking idea is not only about knowing people, but making people proud of what they are doing. Participants from all over the world, um, they came to hear lectures on theory and ideas and hopefully the future of where we're headed with the fascial distortion model. If we look at fascia, weakness is not a normal part of its structure. Uh, there, there is no predictable you know, weakness usually in its structure if it's, if it's intact. So when these patterns are so reproducible and so common that we can name them and we can teach them across the world and everyone sees them, how can that be random? Why, why would that be considered, why is this a random occurrence of a herniated trigger point if everyone knows that that's an SCHTP? Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> I'm KSK Tanaka. In this presentation, we will define folding distortions and introduce you some of techniques that Dr. Tipaldos developed if this trigger point related with the trigger point, the way to treat is push until release, then spa the trigger point technique. 
uh, the the exchange of ideas is is the best part of the conference. Being able to see what the other leaders in the groups are thinking and how they see their practice and their organization developing. Thanks a lot for this wonderful congress. This is for you. Thank you.